What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your app downloads, your overall business, your downloads, and your revenues. And today, we're going to talk all about retention. And it's such a key part in increasing your monetization, whether it's like as for subscription apps, what we've seen is if you increase monetization, you increase retention. But for games, you're going to have to increase retention to increase monetization. So we're going to break all of that down. And then how do you design user experiences that delight and bring happiness to your users? So all that is going to be happening right now. Let me introduce the guest. He is the CEO and co-founder of UserWise, the live ops engine for your mobile game or app. Welcome to the show, Tom Hammond. <music> Hey, Tom, we got you fancy, out. right? What do you think? Welcome back. You guys have gotten way more fancy since the last time I've been here, so that's awesome. <laughs> it's almost like we have our own TV channel. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tom, you know, Live Ops pretty well known in the gaming industry, the mobile gaming industry. But for those, just to break it down with the 101s, for those who aren't familiar with Live Ops, can you tell us what the hell it is? That is a very, very good question. Um, so I, I think when I think of live ops, I think that, um, in today's world, um, just about every app, every game, you know, we've created something and usually whatever we've created should generate some level of revenue, whether it's from in-app purchases or ads or subscriptions or, or whatnot. Um, Live ops is basically a way to uh, create unique and interesting things and experiences for your users or your players that make them want to come back and to keep engaging in these activities that generate you revenue. So, you know, behind the scenes, it's really about how do I give you something fun and surprising and interesting, like a valid reason to come back today to wherever that is. It could be Amazon. It could be clash of clans it could be fortnite like you want to have some sort of draw for your players to come back and ideally you know engage in something um, and live ops is basically a way that you can do these kinds of things without having to do a whole ton of like code changes and stuff so you almost mm -hmm. think about like user wise what we've built is it kind of sits on top of your code base and you connect up what are the different levers that i want to be able to control and you connect those. And now I can change anything within my app experience so that this user has the best version of the platform based on how they use it. And this user might have something a little bit different, but like personalized to them and the things that they like to do, because when it's more of the things that they like, they're more likely to be retained and keep that subscription or whatnot. You still have the YouTube thing going on? In the background uh i think i killed it just to make sure we didn't have some background noise but, uh, actually I'm, it was my I'm fault i had the youtube thing going back <laughs> i had the i had the youtube live stream on on my one of my dabs hey you mentioned amazon one thing i wanted to point out was like this is live ops right like hey a black friday deal everybody's doing it the cool thing was they have this spinny thing right here too you know you share this where you can spin and I know from a gaming perspective too, one of my older clients once told me, he's like, hey, having this like little game type of mechanic that has nothing to do with the core game mechanics, by the way, actually increases retention. So this spinny thing is a very, you know, you see e-commerce brands using it all the time. Very great way to increase engagement. And then, yeah, you didn't win, but, you know, come back, play later. It got you to browse. Yeah. And did you buy something after this, Tom? Dude, I was really close. Okay, so... I kind of want a new mouse, um, but I kind of want like a new gaming mouse. And and so this thing like popped up on Amazon. I don't know if it was like an email or a push notification or how I heard about it, but it was like, you know, spin the wheel for a chance to get $20 on Amazon. And so I was like, well, okay, like I could use $20 on Amazon. So I opened it up and spun it. Now, obviously I didn't win, but it was like, well, while you're here, you know, check out these deals. And one of them was like, uh, 
computer mouse for like five bucks. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like a good deal, but it didn't have any of my like gaming buttons. So I convinced myself that this isn't what you want to do. I didn't spend money on it, but I'm sure a lot of people did look at all those deals and did spend money. So like, but the key thing is I would not have opened Amazon and I would not have looked at the deals at all had this thing not existed. Now, yep. they did have to give $20 to someone I'm sure along the way, but mm -hmm. most people probably didn't really get anything and it was a very low cost, but the average revenue that they made from people opening the app was probably tens to hundreds of dollars you know, per open. Amazon knows how much <laughs> they make every time someone opens the app and I'm sure it's not zero. Uh, yeah. So Live Ops is like, how do I get you to open the app because I know how much I make when you do that. Yeah, I love it. And one of the things, you know, I, we got, you and I talked before the interview, I was trying to prep and you showed me some of the things that you can do within user wise and just some of the customizations. Like you can literally change, you show me a bouncing ball. I don't know if you have that demo ready to go, but like, show me a bouncing yeah. ball. You're like, you're like, I can show you how to within user wise, change the color, customize the landing ball. So if there's a Christmas theme and you want to make it an ornament, easily do that within user wise and you can change the jumping speed and all that stuff, all that from the back end without having to update your particular game. Yeah. You want to see it? Sure. Let's go. All right. Let's see if I can figure this out. I love out. visuals. <clears throat> visuals are the great best. Okay. Can you see my screen? Gotcha. All right. So this is Roblox Studio for you, those of you that don't know that. <clears throat> uh, Roblox is basically a, it's like a gaming platform, I guess. It's really popular with kids in the US. I think it's like one out of two kids in the US like use Roblox every month. Um, but you can go in and make these uh, different games and stuff. So I made a little soccer game. It's very basic, so don't expect too much. But I got a little ball here. And then I hooked that up to UserWise. Um, and the general premise with UserWise, when you're, whether you're hooking up to a game or an app or whatnot, you basically say, what are the things that in the future I might want to be able to change or I might want to be able to personalize? So in this soccer game, I said, well, when I play games, I kind of like to be able to jump really high. Um, or I, I jump a lot. So it'd kind of be kind of cool if I could change my jump rate. Um, and then, you know, it's a soccer game. So maybe I want to be able to change the ball size, shape, color, things like that. Um, and that's pretty much as far as I got. I think I added a couple other things. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in this game here, I have this connected to UserWise and I'm pulling some data down from UserWise, and it's basically changing the ball from that default green to looks like some red bricks. And I've got a little you know jump right here. Um, but if I jump back into UserWise, and we go into this Roblox example. Um, you'll basically see that I defined what are the things that I want to be able to change. So let's make the ball bigger. Let's maybe make it look a little bit cooler. So we'll do like a teal cracked lava look. Um, and of course, I like to jump really high. So let's make my jump rate go higher. Um, now I can save these things. Now, mind you, because we live within user-wise, like maybe I did an A-B test. I had multiple versions of this running. Maybe I had a segment. So users that have done this thing in the past are gonna get this version. Users that have done this other thing are gonna get something different. Um, but now I can jump back in here. <clears throat> and things are changed. The ball is much, much bigger. I can jump much higher. Um, again, it's literally anything that you want to change and control over the air, uh, personalized change, you know, maybe when I'm playing this game, this would be like a time limited game mode or something. So, you know, this week we're going to have super huge balls that you play. I don't even know if I'm big enough to push this, but you know, maybe if I'm playing this with my friends, we could all push it together and it could kind of be, kind of be a, 
a fun different version of the game without really having to you know pull in developers to do a whole bunch of you know timing and stuff um my other company um if i added some kind of live ops on top of it um you know we kind of have this survey system um you know maybe i want to change the surveys that i show based on how users have behaved in the past you know if i'm running something like retail me not or something you know if i am a man and i'm never going to buy women's bras here you know does it make sense for them to show this is like a top choice for me there maybe not maybe they have to right now but like if this was personalized based on how i used it in the past maybe they would show i don't know computer mice or something that is gonna you know entice me because they know that i've looked at that on amazon or you know this that or the other but that's the general general premise is you can change and customize whatever you want um, to ideally make the best user experience for this person right now. I think you might talking. be muted. Yeah. I was <laughs> muted. I know you were talking about personalizing your UA and giving the users the same type of look and feel that might be working on ads. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we do a lot of stuff here on mobile, right? Um, Historically, the way that the marketing world works is, you know, they'll have, you know, some kind of ad creative that often will bring you to a landing page that kind of matches that ad creative and kind of gives you the flow and ultimately kind of guides you through. Um, in the world of mobile, though, um, we don't really have that, right? We just have the static app store page. Um, so everyone that sees an ad for, let's say clash of clans, they all go to the same app store page and they all get the same first time user experience, even though every person's a little bit different, the things that they like about games might be different. The things that they saw in those different ads might've been different, but after they click that ad, everyone kind of goes to the standard flow. Now, recently, Apple introduced uh, custom apps product pages. So, you know, in theory, you could have, if I saw the creative for mountain biking, I could get an app store product page that is all about, you know, screenshots about mountain biking and stuff. And the person that saw the ad about hiking or something, they might get something different. But again, after I click install, both of them get the same app experience. Um, what we've been seeing people do lately um, with UserWise, kind of in combination with deep links and segmentation and that whole being able to change anything is we'll say marketing teams that are like, okay, what things would I like to be able to change in the app or game experience? I connect those up to UserWise, just like you guys just saw before. And now I can be like, hey, if this player saw the Princess Jasmine ad, Maybe once they get into the game, we're going to start them with the Princess Jasmine chapter of content where they're working towards saving Princess Jasmine. And if they saw the Beauty and the Beast ad, we're going to start with the chapter about Beauty and the Beast where they have to like clean up the castle and, you know, whatever. Um, but it could be a very different experience that ultimately started with the ad that they saw. So how do I create that perfect user journey or perfect player journey based on where they're at? Um, even I think, I think we were talking about... Uh, what was that uh, therapy type app? That's, I want to say like Headspace, but I think it's uh, BetterHelp. Or yeah, that might have been. Um, but you know, it's like the same thing. There is like something about the ad that you created yeah. or the thing that the user clicked brought them in. But if you yeah. have something very different than what they saw, chances are they're going to have you know, not a great user experience. Like imagine that I go to the store to buy a pan and what I pull out of the box is very different than what was on the box. You know, maybe I thought I was getting a frying pan and I end up getting, you know, some kind of soup bowl or something. It's probably not what I want. It's probably not usable and I'm probably going to return it kind of pissed. Um, but we do that all the time with mobile advertising. Um, and I think that should 
change. Yeah, here I'll show you an example just from a podcast advertising realm. Better help using them, right? Like I listened to this podcast, Tiger Belly with Bobby Lee, comedian, and then you can go to BetterHelp dot com slash tiger belly when i did that it took him it gave you that personalized experience hey you know you got you listen to this podcast we're going to show you some branding around it and then you can get started right there so that's the most simplistic form but tom uh, uh, narinda was asked narindra i'm sorry <laughs> this is interesting personalizing the content without submitting the new app version how do we get through apple review doesn't apple have anything against this oh no no, not at all. Like this is extremely commonplace and pretty much every game does it after some fashion. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, even, you know, in some cases you might do this with like a Google Firebase. I mean, it's not as clean or easy as user wise, but um, yeah, people do this all the time. I mean, feature flags is an entire industry um, that's been out there for a long time. Um, now, Yes, you do kind of hide stuff that Apple might not necessarily see, but they generally don't care. Now, this is how uh, Epic did turn on the feature where they started uh, using their own payment system that got them kicked off of the App Store. Um, but they, they did that on purpose and they flaunted it in Apple's face. Um, so as long as you're not trying to do something like that, you can pretty much you know, do whatever you want. Um, you're basically just like the release that you gave might just, you know, change over time. Any game you play like Fortnite, if you open that up every day, there's going to be different stuff going on every day. And they have, you know, a system like this behind the scenes. Okay, cool. I want to say hi to a few people as well. Uh, what's up Luke, you were the first one. How's it going? Adrian, good to see you. Good talking to you and catching up. And then uh, let's see, Miguel's here. Narinda said hi to you. Ricardo, what's happening, my man? And then Kevin, good to see you. And then yes, Tom, the other Tom. <laughs> there was a spam. I think I've gotten bigger now. Maybe spam. Screw free live girls when you haven't had live streams. Yes, exactly. Good to see you, Tom, from Germany. And then Romaine's here as well. Well, the next thing I want to talk about too, Tom um, was like. You know, I sent an email out to my list and I said, hey, you know, here's our most popular subject line. And it happened to be our most popular blank, fill in the blank. And that was great in terms of increasing engage engagement for a client of ours. We saw 1.8 X when we changed the subject line from whatever it was, the benefits of blah, 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 to our most popular fill in the blank. What are some of the best practices you've seen from a re-engagement standpoint? Because I know UserWise helps you with push notifications. So especially around the push notifications realm. So, you know, I view push notifications a lot like email. In some cases, you have to be like more careful with push notifications than emails because like, at least with an email, I can sign up with my like crap old account and like I don't have to see all that stuff in my face, but like push notifications, I can only like tolerate so many before I just like go crazy and like turn them all off. Um, yeah. I think a large part is that marketing teams in the past have just abused things like email and push notifications and Facebook uh, feed, you know, things or whatever, you know. And that's because it kind of worked in the past but only to a certain point and people found them very annoying and after a certain point of annoyance like you just have a low tolerance um so i think with push notifications whenever i'm doing a strategy session for someone i'm like okay get me a list of every push notification that you're sending what is the mm -hmm. content who are you sending it to when are you sending it to them and why are you sending it to them now right. i have found very few folks that have this complete list where it makes sense who they're sending it to, what they're sending, when they're sending. And if I, you know, really get them down to the nuts and bolts of it, I can say, okay, well, is this push notification that you're sending to this person at 1230 PM in the middle of their lunch break, is it really providing value to them? Or is it mostly just an annoyance? Especially like if this user never uses your app except from like 8 to 9 p.m. when they're sitting on the couch after the kids are in bed 
why are you bothering them at 7 a.m. in the morning? Does that make sense? Probably not. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I thought you made it make sense what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, I like to make sure that anytime I'm sending a push notification, like you have trust with this user because they allowed push notifications. So most users aren't going to allow that, but you have a trust with them. Now, it's a very hard to keep that trust and to build that trust. It's very easy to violate that trust with one wrong action. So, you know, you can kind of act in the back of your head, like, am I sending this in a way that is providing this person a lot of value for them? Um, so mm -hmm. I, I actually think Supercell does this pretty well with their games. Um, they do have a decent number of push notifications, but they always are valuable. It's like, hey, your chest is done. You might want to come in and open it right now so that you can, you know, open the next chest and you're not losing time. Hey, your army is available. Do you want to come in and like raid and use that? Were you waiting for that for some purpose? Like, you know, everything that they send you pretty much is a notification that is valuable to me, possibly. And it doesn't kind of violate that trust. Um, I see other folks that'll like send push notifications for some random thing that's going on or that, Hey, here's a sale. Like click this to spend money. Like, why do I want to give you money right now? Like, no. Um, so that, that's kind of the approach I take. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. I, I put this together and it's in our app masters Academy, but I kind of came up with this drip campaign and it's essentially like, around email marketing drip campaigns from the web look i think you have to deliver a quick win right it's essentially what is that first thing that you want people to do get them to do that solve whatever their problem is this is this app is a solution come up with some testimonials overcome an objection you know and then i hit them with sales afterwards but like build that trust in the very beginning because i think you have a seven day window it might even be closer to three i don't know i love your thoughts on that but you want to make sure that you deliver a quick win because even my emails i try to be like is there a tip in here that i can give my audience because i don't want them you know i don't want to be like hey just join my live stream it's just like hey is there something in here that's valuable that if you didn't join the live stream you'd still get some value out of this yeah that's a good one okay so i think one of the the big things that is uh, key to touch on is when do you ask for you know push notification authority I see a lot of people that are like, oh, well, I get the highest rate of acceptance if I just like pop it up as soon as they like download the app. But it's like yep. a lot of users, like even if you get 60% of that 60%, how many are they going to stick around? And of the 40% that said no, and you burn your chance, like, you know, couldn't they have been like a super valuable user that you needed push notifications in the past? Um, so one of my favorite um, things is in Platika's, uh, I think it's Slotomania. Um, and the way that they ask for push notifications is they don't. Um, you just get to like play this game, you're playing it around. And eventually you'll see a little spot that's got like a little red dot. And if you click it, um, there's the ability to accept a free gift and you get a whole bunch of coins. Only after you find that and you get this free gift of coins, do they give you another pop-up that's not the, you know, ask for push notification stuff. It's the, hey, you know, would you like to be notified when free gifts are available in the future, like the one that you just collected? So they kind of hit you with that dopamine hit, but they also give you a easy no, so they can actually ask you again in the future. But if you say yes, then they finally do pop up the push notification thing and you can accept it. What's interesting, interesting is they don't violate that either. The push notifications that you start to get on day one and day two and day three, whatever, all of them are notifying you that you have free gifts of coins and stuff that's available and you can come in and you can collect them. It's providing a lot of value to the user. And right as you kind of outlined on that system, it's establishing that trust. So I said, here's why you want push notifications. And then I kept with what I said I was going to give you with that push notification. And so you kind of build that trust. Now, at some point, they might change that. I haven't gotten that far into the game. But at least in those early days, they establish trust and they maintain that trust. 
I like that. Luke has a question. For apps without a login, will it remember, <coughs> user-wise, will it remember the customizations on second open, or does IDFA prevent that? Yeah, I mean, the way that user-wise works behind the scenes uh, is you'll have some sort of unique ID for a user. Um, where you store that, how you store that. Um, I've built plenty of apps without an you know ID notification system, and you still have some sort of user ID. So there's like a unique ID that you interact with user-wise with. So yes, it does remember the customizations. Um, you know, is there a simplest like live ops campaign <clears throat> that is universal to all apps that you're like, hey, you know, here's a low hanging fruit, do this, you should see an increase in engagement. <clears throat> That's a good question. I would say something about free gifts and surprises. Um, mm. People like to be surprised and they like getting free things. Um, so like that Amazon thing that I posted about that we you know showed on here, like. I had the ability to potentially get $20 for free on Amazon. I imagine that a lot of people didn't mind getting that and a lot of people didn't mind coming in and checking it out. Um, so I would probably say that's a, a low hanging fruit. Um, another one that you wouldn't necessarily think of, um, many apps have users all over the world, right? Um, doing something special even better if you do free gifts um, on like holidays. So, you know, I, I was one time talking to a guy and he said, one of the best live ops campaigns that we ever did in our app, they had like a, a bingo game, I think, was they set up campaigns for all the different countries independence days. And he said, I remember on Brazil, um, our Brazilian users, and they know that like, we're not over there, we're over in like the Netherlands and whatnot, but yeah. I logged in and I got a little pop up that was like Happy Independence Day from your friends over here at so and so. Like, here's a little free gift because we're thinking of you. Um, and he said, like, that drove better retention than like nearly any of these other fancy things that we are trying to do because the users felt like, hey, this company actually cares about me. They care about mm. my country. And it was like a really personal connection. I love that campaign. Okay. Let's get into, do you have a dad joke ready? I should have asked you during our call yesterday. But let's get into the app audit segment of our interview. What do you think? You got one? Oh, dad joke. Oh, I don't know. I might have to Google a, a good dad joke. You got some time. Here's third. Don't worry, Ricardo might have one for you. All right, Ricardo. All right. All right, so I'll go first. And I know I owe a lip sync battle because I lost the last round. You know, I technically could have won. All right. Tom, what do you get when the sunrise? What do you get when the sunrise bends over? I don't know, Steve. What do you get? The crack of dawn. <laughs> all right, all right. I got one for you. Okay, cool. Why was Cinderella so bad at soccer? Why? She kept running away from the ball. <laughs> okay. All right. Put S if you thought my joke was better and put T if you thought Tom's joke was better. And then we'll play for something fun. So, all right. We got now, if you guys want us to take a look at your apps, all you got to do is simple. It's that go to appmasters.com slash audit appmasters.com slash audit. All right. We have Loki ready. Loki ready. Okay. Monitor and new features that could be added to his app. So it is a WhatsApp app that allows you to have multiple dual screens. So if you want it on your Android, you want it on your iPhone, you want it on every other phone, you can have it on multiple screens. So that's what the app does. And anything from the App Store presence that you want to mention, Tom? Hold on, I'm pulling it up right here. Give it a perusal again. All right. So I would say one thing that I do like is, um, you know, a lot of screenshots will just be like of the, the phone itself and he kind of has room yeah. for doing messaging and stuff. So, so that's a good, good thing that I see. Uh, <laughs> Ricardo, hilarious. 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I love the, so Loki Ready, I, I love that you have these trust symbols too. Like everybody knows it. And it's like my eye goes to that. I don't know why you have PDF, but all right. Like if it's more for WhatsApp and stuff, maybe like sort of copy the chat symbol. I don't know why you have that PDF symbol here. But yeah, I love the screenshot so far. So I think the monetization is going to be interesting. Let's take a quick peek at the monetization of the app. Yeah, and it looks like it says it's for um, WhatsApp, but it, then you kind of scroll down, and I guess he's got support for a whole bunch of other social yeah, he networks. Does. Yeah. Look, Tom, it 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 shows you the push notification right away. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit don't allow. Okay, get ready to log in. Convert files to PDF. Make PDF files from screenshots of what I, okay. Is that really a feature? I don't know. Is that the purpose of the app? And why it has PDF okay. at the top, maybe? Yeah, so I don't mind this paywall. I'll let you go on this paywall. What do you think? <clears throat> so I am a big fan of always letting people experience the what i want to call the magic moment first uh, so anytime i'm designing let's say like a you know game offer or something i think genshin impact actually does an amazing job of this so really what genshin impact sells is these different heroes and like the five star mm -hmm. heroes and like the five star blades to get those you have to do a bunch of gotcha and like rolls and things like that but what they do is as part of playing through the game and the story, you actually will play as that character. So you get to experience how much more powerful they are than your other guy. You get to experience how awesome this thing is than something else. And you get to establish a connection and understand the true value of what you're getting there. And same thing when I look at any sort of like app or whatnot, it's like, it's kind of hard to sell something without letting someone try something first it's kind of why like when we go to costco everyone loves those free samples and why they probably yeah. sell buco amounts of them because if you really have something that's amazing like the user gets to try it and now i don't have to like risk my money of like hey am i gonna like this or not of like oh okay that's pretty darn good better better grab a package of that um so again this isn't necessarily bad and it probably works in some cases, but if there was a way to like let the user experience that magic of the PDF transition or whatever it is, if that really yeah. solves, then every user is going to want to sign up after that, I think. Yeah. So the app allows you to save WhatsApp chats <clears throat> as PDF. Again, I don't know if that's a feature that most people want, but interesting that they have it. So the other thing I would say, I like to Tom's point. So Tom, we've actually seen like people for subscription apps, people normally buy on the onboarding process. And that seems to be the best practice for subscription apps. I don't like this paywall at all. I think to Tom's point, what you can test is maybe getting people to connect a WhatsApp account first and then hit them with the paywall. So get them to engage with your app first and foremost, and then ask for the paywall. I would really be testing this paywall though. I think it's but ugly and it just, what I don't like is if I tap on one month, like it's just very hard to read. If the one month has three days free, great, but like show it. How come this says, you know, like just show the three day trial. Why do I, why do I have to hit continue? So it looks like the weekly doesn't have a trial, which is fine. The monthly has a three day trial and the lifetime obviously has no trial, but I would put them as buttons like vertically because then I could really sort of com compare and contrast which one is the best. And then here, I don't like this swipe. So this is something that was popular in the web days, but it just doesn't work. People don't read like this because they can't remember. So allow them to scroll up and down versus side to side is my opinion. And then it's like unlock everything or whatever. Like you need some messaging up here, but I would really be playing around with this paywall a lot. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, better communicating what the value is and, and maybe even like what you want the user to actually do, like which of these is the most popular, you know, one of them might be like, you know, three days for free, like best value or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. 
Yeah. So you can connect WhatsApp. I won't do that with mine because I have too many messages on there, but you can easily connect in here. I think it's this homepage is a little busy too. I can't even go back. So <clears throat> let me go back. It's very busy. And I've seen other WhatsApp ads. Don't mind this. <laughs> even have a countdown. That's funny. Uh, Honestly, I wouldn't do the countdown. I would just not show it and then just show the X 10 seconds later. It does work. I would clean this up a little bit. I don't mind all this stuff. And I like the locks here. Yeah, I don't mind this. I think I would just make this big and bold, right? Just the format, the layout a little bit. I don't mind this, actually. Yeah. This is pretty good. The, nice. the little, little countdown is interesting. And those are the kinds of things that like I see sometimes like people do test with, with like user wise is like you could connect a bunch of stuff on this and then you could just try different combinations, you know, test to see which actually gets you the best yeah. thing. I like it. Overall, it's pretty good. I think, I think your features, I won't look at your features too much. You know, the way I like to think about this, Tom, is your install the trial activation is a marketing problem. Your trial to actual payment is a product problem. So yeah. that's a simplistic way I like to think about that. Probably what I would do is I would try to talk to the users that like really like this and give it the five stars and they're actually paying for it to try to understand mm -hmm. how are you using it? What do you love the most about it? And then can you take that information and turn it into some marketing tips so that other people will be like, yeah, that's actually what I'm trying to do or what I'm looking for. Exactly. So like, what I like to do is assuming these are all real, look at the app store reviews and people will tell you. And so when I'm trying to figure out what copy I should be using on my screenshots, what should I be using in the paywall optimization up here? Well, I turn to the app store reviews and I'm like, Hey, are these all real? Yes. Okay, cool. Nice to have four WhatsApp. So it's like your messaging can be like connect up to four WhatsApp accounts. You know what I mean? Like if that's just regurgitate what people are using and it, Assuming these are all real, it seems like this four account is really cool. So, and the fact that you can connect to, and then like it's connect to four WhatsApp accounts, and then it's like connect to all the social media platforms, blah, 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 blah. So, all the benefits that you have that people are getting from the app, put that in your paywall. Let's see. Tom says, is this a problem that specifically you had that's building there? Yeah, it's a very popular type of app, Tom. I've seen this types of apps too here we work with a few all right tom it looks like tom hammond it's like i won the first round so we got romaine gave me a vote ram gave you the vote luke said me rinda said you and then ricardo as a tiebreaker ricardo had a joke on his own that joke was good on both ends i like that ricardo gave me the win too <laughs> so you're down one brother you're down one you want me to go first or you want to go first on this next one Ah, oh, all right. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. What do you call an angry carrot? What? A steamed veggie. I like that one. All right. I think I might lose this one. All right. My, my wife said she's leaving me because of my obsession with tennis and that I'm too old. I said, honey, I'm only 40, love. There you go. <laughs> so put S or T. Now, unfortunately, I cannot cast my Android for the life of me. As Tom, you and I have been talking, I've been trying so hard to do this, but it's not working. So I might not be able to share my screen, my Android screen. I'm going to try a different software, but let's see. This is, I really wanted to bring this up because I think this is great for user wise as well. So it's a news app, short news, functionality and monetization. But news app, right? Very timely stuff. Push notifications, super easy to do. But it looks like best short news, videos, and earnings app. I guess you can win some stuff. This is what the app does. 50,000 downloads already, so not too bad. But any thoughts on this one while I try to figure this out? I'm trying to pull it. Oh, I see. I was pulling it up on my Apple, but it's a Google one. All right, hold on. Short. Yeah, it's a Google one. Oh, shoot, I deleted the other one. Air droid. Yeah, hey, you can go first while I'm pulling it up if you want. I'm trying to pull up everything, too. I'm trying to get my Android to show up properly. <clears throat> Headline network. Oh, 
Well, first thing I would say is you probably want to have one on iOS too, since at least in the US, most people have iPhones. Um, I think they might be in India, so just judging from this screenshot right here. Uh -huh. Okay, but the the thing I can lead off while you pull this up. The, so what I would say is I've been talking a lot about this with Google Play Explorer, yeah, India's best news and video earning app. Don't know what the earnings mean. Maybe it's like read news and earn money. Maybe that's what you want to go. So I might lead with that. Like what is the benefit? <clears throat> okay, so earn money by sharing products. Like don't just leave with earn money or earnings app because I feel like you're trying to spam me in that regard versus like me. Okay, when you say if I share products, that's interesting versus like earnings app. Like what does that even mean? Am I going to get spammed here? So I almost have the negative appeal. What I've been saying about YouTube and the videos that you use on your Google Play, they actually do help with your ASO. But like I know in India, I think it's time that is interesting for a new, I think it's one of the biggest Indian news apps out there. But think about your competitors too, Avinash, and like have these tags. So you have no tags here, but news here, to like whatever you're going after if you're going after for short news and video then have that in the title right here have a good description i pretty much use what i have in the google play long description and then your tags should all be some of your competitors so you think of the youtube tags as like the ios keyword meta keyword field and that really helps with the google play explorer because look at more apps to try now it could be the fact that i'm in the us and that's why it's showing me this but you want to show up for the other popular news app because this does drive more downloads the Google Play Explorer. Okay. I will say it seems like you're confused about who you are and what you do. Um, like the, the first line is short video news videos. Okay. But then the second line is get the best deals and discounts on products, top daily sale and weekly sale. And then earn money by sharing products. Like there's so much stuff going on in here. I feel like you should pick like one value prop of like, what is this thing actually for? Why do people want to use it every day? What is the thing that's really providing value to them? And then mm -hmm. it seems like all your messaging and stuff should be around that thing because you're probably losing a lot of people that are getting confused about what you're doing. And then just like Steve said, I've, maybe got some nervousness in the back of my mind of like, well, I, I really wanted a short news video app, but now it seems like there's all this stuff with products. Like maybe I shouldn't trust this thing and I should go find something else. It's like about what I'm looking for. Yeah. See if this works now with us. That's just not looking for me. Actually, actually try this on different browsers. Webcast, what are you feeling me, dude? Can't, no. <laughs> I even have the client. Nothing is working. Webcast. What is wrong with you? Look, this got this. Nothing is working. Start casting on my phone. Nothing's working. Okay. So let me just get into the app itself and I'll just kind of narrate what I'm looking at because they want help with the, the news. All right. So saying preferred language like that, your localized headline network. I mean, this is great for push notifications engagement, right, Tom? Like you got to like the, I mean, the only things fantasy football for me, but the, the, the few apps I do have push notifications on is when I want to know about fantasy football news, like up to date, who's going to be injured, who's not like, this is the, this is the stuff that I like to know, but news apps should have really high engagement here. Yeah, oh, it's slow and it could be my phone, but it is really slow for me right now. If you want to take the push notifications to the next level too, I would I would consider adding some like um, filtering features based on different things. So like, what kind of news videos do you want to get notified of? So like for Steve, if he could only get notified when there's something new about fantasy football or like a football injury or something like that, I bet that would be kind of a delightful feature for you. Because you probably don't care about those other news things, you know, whatever is going on. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, it's very it looks like in the trailer it also yeah. says you can like post videos on here. So I wonder if this is like people sharing local news stuff near you or something too. I don't know. 
that's interesting. And I think this is speaking to like what apps I've seen too. It's like you're trying to do too much and trying to be everything to everybody and just like try to do one thing really well and that's it. And I think that is really it. I just focus on app marketing. I don't do any other app marketing, no SaaS, no e-commerce marketing. This is just all I do. Like focus in on the niche because it's still loading, by the way. I don't know what's happening, Avinash, but like it's still loading for me and nothing's coming up. But posting, earning money, shopping, like you're trying to be every, maybe you're just a portal and a big portal. If you are a big company, you got VC money and you're trying to go big, okay, fine. Like, I'll stay out. I'll shut up. You're trying to be the next well, Yahoo. But even there, though, like, you know, pull up Instagram. I mean, look how much longer their stuff is than Instagram, uh, just for comparison. And what are all the yeah. things you can do on Instagram? You can shop for products, you can see ads, but that's not why people are downloading the app. People are downloading right. Instagram to connect with their friends, to share with their friends and to engage with them. Uh, they might even have too much with like having the week reels on there, but it's like patient. <laughs> they're trying to like connect with it. You can always do more things once you're in the experience, but like exactly. you have a purpose in the ASO that is to communicate what is the value. So the user actually downloads that and gets into the app. Each stage yeah. has a purpose. That's a great example. You know, it pains me too, Tom, when people are like, Oh yeah, he does ASO. And I'm like, no, I do much more, but okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at least I'm known for something, but that pains me too as a personal example. And somebody was like, yeah, he's great at increasing downloads and revenue. I'm like, oh, you hit it on the head. That's, it's that simple. But yeah, I love that example with Instagram. Like, that's what are most people coming in for, Avinash? Lean into that and then worry about everything else. Like, oh, this is, the other stuff is like sort of like re-engagement. Increases the engagement, but everything else is the main reason that people are coming for. All right. Mm. The last thing I want to cover with you, you know, we kind of just talked about this yesterday, but like day one retention, pretty critical for games and apps. Day seven, day 30, those are the typical retention rates. Now I asked you, I was like, hey, what if I am working on an app that's getting about a 26% day one retention? And then you asked me, what is your day seven and day 30 retention? So I've got those numbers for you. And I was like, Tom, what, what, should, what advice would you give? So here's the day one. It's 26%, 25%. Day seven is 12%. And day 30 is around 3%. What kind of advice would you have for an app that is a game in the word game realm? Yeah. So commonly when you talk to um, game developers, they're – biggest thing is they look for the retention ratio. Um, and what I mean by like, what's your day one versus your day three, how many people, you know, drop, and ideally, you want that to be 0.7 or higher. Um, so if I have, let's say 26%, and let's times that by 0.7 for three, that would be 18 times 0.7. Again, that gets down to 12. So they're actually at a decent uh, 0.7 ratio. Um, now let's do that for day 14 and then, uh, day 30. What's the, where did the 0.7 come from? It's just, that's the best practice. That's just, yeah. If you usually like you want to target 0.7 from what I've heard. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I lost it. Let me try. Okay. So 26 with that 0.7 down to day three would be 18.2 and then we'll do another one it says 12 so that's the the day seven so we're on par here so far uh, then we'll do day 14 is about 8.9 and day 30 should be about six percent so they they see a pretty big drop off on that last one um, okay. so something in there is, is pretty me you know messed up now I'm thinking for a word game that 3% is probably too low to scale in the long term. I don't know word games that much, but I'm guessing if they maintain that ratio for longer and they started at a higher value, ideally we'd tail out at, you know, 10 or 15% day 30. Um, so <clears throat> probably scaling it, it's going to be hard right now. Now, what you might want to do is you might want to talk to those like 
people that are still around on day 30 and to understand like, what do you most love about the game? Like what's keeping you around or whatnot and try to understand, you know, what are the key problems that are in there? Um, the other thing you could do is maybe try to talk to or understand like those 74% of people that are not coming back. Like what didn't they like about your game? Like obviously, and this is where a lot of people I don't think, think about it's like, okay, it's not like it's easy to get an app, right? Like, I had to see some ad on like Facebook or YouTube. It had to be so enticing that I took the time to click it. And I took the time to look at the app store page and then I downloaded it. And then once it downloaded, then I actually opened it up and engaged with it. Like there's a lot of steps in there, right? Like this person was committed. So how did your game or your app fail them so completely from what they expected to what they actually got? And if you can figure out where you failed them, I'm thinking, with word games, oftentimes the mechanics are pretty fun, but the words can matter so much. Like I've played some word games that make me feel super smart. And I'm bad at word games, really bad. Most word games that I play make me feel like an utter idiot and I don't want to keep playing them. And the, really the only difference is, is that the words and how they're displayed and organized, you know, like, I've seen some international teams that do word games and they're like non us traditional. And like some of the words that they picked, I was like, guys, you gotta get a native English speaker or something. Like maybe it's just me, but like, mm -hmm. this is crazy. I never would have like figured this out. Um, yeah. so word games are very finicky in that sense. Um, 26%, I would be kind of nervous about that, but if that 26%, most of those users stuck around. So we got to day 30 and you're, 10, 15%, and it's pretty much a flat line and those users stay forever, that could be scalable um, because you don't have to have a ton of users. You just have to have a small portion that love your game forever. Even really popular games like Clash of Clans, Candy Crush, like they still have like 15, 20% day 30 retention, but those users that love it enough to stick around, love it forever. And you can start to stack those MAUs, DAUs over time. I love it. Yeah. One of the things that we're working on just as a brainstorming exercise between you and me and the audience here is looking at the paywall, trying to optimize that and trying to maybe increase that conversion. It's not too bad actually. And then the layout of the homepage, right? Like what kind of puzzles you can do, things like that, and really tweaking that product a little bit more. Cause that, that was my feedback to the developer was, Hey, I think this is too busy. I don't know where to go. And to your point, Tom, about like the independence day example, like it could be like, Nash independence day or national donut day we have in the states there's all these national whatever days in the state so if it's heavy on the u.s side then you know you can have crossword puzzles around national whatever day and there i think it's nationalcalendar.com or something there's some goofy <laughs> national whatever stuff in there yeah cool those are all right great. anything else that i missed that you want to make sure we cover For me, the biggest lesson that I've learned, you know, anywhere in life is focus on your users and the experience that they're having. So put yourself in their shoes. What are they trying to do? Why are they trying to do it? Um, and just help them to do the things that they're trying to do better, faster, more efficiently. The more you can do that, the better off the experience is going to be for everyone. I love it. Well said, my friend. All right. The website is userwise.io, userwise.io, the live ops engine for your mobile game. Live ops, just anything that will bring your users back into your game or your app. Tom, is it an SDK? Like, how do we get that? How do we get userwise into our apps? Yeah, we do have an SDK. Um, and then a lot of folks that we work with will actually do our server to server integration. So you don't have to do a okay. bunch of client dev and, and stuff like that. More secure, faster dev kind of a thing. But you can use the SDK too. All that's above that. So I'm sure if you're a tech person, you understood all that stuff. <laughs> but that is awesome. Once again, it is userwise.io. Tom, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way to say thank you for coming on, where else do you want to send them? Yeah, I mean, you guys are always welcome to message me on LinkedIn or shoot me an email, tom at userwise.io. You know, I, I love helping, you know, anyone that's uh, out here on this entrepreneurial journey. It's a fun, lonely road, but uh, yeah. I love it. 
Tom, I got some unfortunate use for news for you heading into the weekend. So you actually lost, my friend. Let's the last round you, you got clobbered three zero. So you owe me something. I don't know what that is, but you owe me a favor. How about that? <laughs> and then we'll we'll go from there. I think that's fair. That that was a pretty bad joke. I was hoping that I could lean into the fact that it was so terrible that people would really like it, but uh, I know it's <laughs> Even that didn't work. All right. All right, guys. Next week, we're going to talk all about how do you do build an app. If you're a coach out there, if you got content and you want to build an app quickly, we're going to talk to Sunny from Breakthrough Apps. They have an app builder that's going to allow – and it's perfect for coaches. He's worked with some really big coaches on there. We're going to talk about how do you get it out there, what do you say to your audience, how do you get your audience to come to your app as well. So join us every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. And then the week before or the day before Christmas, I want to do something special. So make sure you sign up for that newsletter because I'll put you guys up. All right. Until next time, I'll see you. Have a great weekend. Bye. Cheers all.